Okay, so I just finished uh, the course uh, Crypto 1, the second time I took the course just for repetition before Crypto 2 starts. So now I just um, started a new course, Malicious Software in the Underground Economy. So that the first two weeks of that course took, really took me back to the 1980s when I was doing two things. I was playing guitar and I was uh, playing with my home computer. This Spectrum, it looked like this. So the songs that were popular in the 1980s, this is maybe the most popular song, at least at my home. I left alone, my mind was blank. I needed time to think to get uh, something like that. I learned to program on my ZX Spectrum, 48 kilobytes of memory. It looks just like this. And the first 8 kilobyte was reserved to the read-only memory called Rome, where this basic interpreter was stored. And I actually... Uh, the basic code, it was inside the book. This book explained how to program basic code sound and simple program, if sentences, print statements, go to and so on, branches, drawing stuff on the screen, circles and stuff like that, and colors. And then uh, in the first eight kilobytes the ROM was stored and here is the machine code of the ROM. It looks like this, page up and page down for 8 kilobytes. So this uh, high level language, basic, uh, it was interpreted by the ROM code, this 8 kilobytes ROM code. So when you type the basic statement, the spectrum jumped into the machine code and started to execute this. That was burned into the ROM, read all the memory, you could have changed it. So. Um, you actually only had access to the last 8 kilobytes of memory on a 16k machine. But on a 48k machine you had access to all of the high 32 kilobytes and, and around 8 kilobytes of the low 16 kilobytes. So that were the times, basic. And of course um, this is the book where I learned machine code for Spectrum for the Z80 processor which was in it. Title is in Swedish, it means beyond basic spectrum machine code. So it's had like funny pictures and woohoo finally set eighty instructions and so on. And there was like these books that were uh, printed that had basic snippets for small games. Like this, you could write a game for a bomber plane trying to hit the ship or uh, stuff like that. And uh, some of the games here yeah, for the Vic Pet Spectrum set X81 was the predecessor to uh, Spectrum 48K. BBC TRS-80, TRS-80 was a classic computer from the 1970s even, and an Apple computer, which was the predecessor to the model Apple. And they had, you know, like Mission Milky Way and these short basic codes that worked on all three or four computers. Moonlander, the classic. So that's basic code for the Moonlander. So you could just enter the source code here and then you could play your little game and save it on cassette and play it. Then I bought the Commodore 64 and later an Amiga. So this one is very interesting, the Amiga. You could do much more advanced stuff uh, on the Amiga. 
and they really uh, people like to show off their um, programming skills and create what they call demos, small program, uh, small programs that just did cool stuff with the graphics by manipulating hardware. Here's it, hardware, uh, the Amiga hardware, and of course they made extensive use of the Amiga uh, operating system kernel which were in the read-only memory area, burnt in to the uh, memory, just like on the Spectrum. And then later I uh, started on the university, uh, or at least uh, it's high school in Swedish, but it's the same as university. So this was the first programming book I had in school. It's Pascal, Turbo Pascal. And then, so this Pascal code looks like well, you don't see much, a bit boring. The book is falling apart. And then we started to learn C instead. So this is the classic C book by uh, Koenig and Ritchie, which are also, those two people were uh, instrumental, influential in the actual creation of this language. And at the same time, we used Unix uh, at uh, this uh, uh, high school university where I went. So that's where I came into contact with the Unix security. So you see this book is from 1994. So that was, I think I got this book a little later, but this book actually is also from 94 and I actually bought this in 1994 when Linux was pretty new. I ju just installed installed my first Linux system. Uh, and uh, in this series, uh, O'Reilly, is it O'Reilly? Hmm? So I think this was the best Linux book at the time, running Linux. This is the second printing from 1995. Uh, and um, yeah, it really covers all your stuff that you were doing with Linux at the time, at in 1995. And then of course, Later on, uh, when the internet started to become popular, uh, these kind of books uh, started to appear. The Happy Hacker, written by Carolyn Mino, which uh, uh, real uh, computer security guys uh, think that she's a joke, but I really think those, this uh, book was pretty funny to read. She's not maybe the her foremost expert in computer security, but she explains uh, things in a funny way for the newbies, at least. She has the right spirit. Uh, and and then there started to appear. Ooh, this came out in 1994. Secrets of a Super Hacker, the Nightmare. <laughs> so, um, well, this was actually pretty early, but it had stuff. social engineering attacks explaining how it worked and uh, borderline hacking, hacking for cash, uh, the bordering to the grey hat and black hats, uh, um, what's it called, cyber criminals, instead of before people just uh, did cool stuff with computers because they could and to show off their skills, but then slowly started to move on to criminal um, and this guy even has chapters on this, how to keep from getting caught. Yeah, And of course this is maybe also a grey area book. This was like, came out in 1998, this second edition. And it contained everything that was known about computer viruses in 1998. And including assembly code for all known techniques at the time. So, if you ever wanted to write a virus, this was the book to have. All techniques explained here. Of course, they are old now. There are new techniques, there are new operating systems. Then, um, this book was actually the book that got me interested in computer security. It sounds strange because it's like a joke book about conspiracy theories but it also uh, has some interesting um, aspects it introduces mock religion which uh, worships introduces worship of chaos and uh, disorder 
and um, yeah, it was very popular in the 1970s and 1980s, and I think also the German group uh, KS Computer Club um, took their name from this book. So that was big at the time, and also this book was very popular in the early 1990s. The book the National Security Agency don't want you to read. They tried to even stop it from getting published by Bruce Schneier, which made him famous, instantly famous overnight. And he still is one of the foremost famous guys in computer security still today. And this book explains uh, cryptographic algorithms. It's maybe not the most up-to-date book, but it explains the basic algorithms and the basic math in a pretty good way. But uh, it uh, really encourages you to implement things yourself and you really shouldn't do it because there are many um, problems. If you write your own code, even if it seems to work, you could introduce side channel attacks. This book introduces historical ciphers, Simon Singh, the code book. So in, in a very popular sciencey way, uh, Simon Singh here introduces the concept of cryptography, at least historical cryptos. And he mentions a little bit about modern crypts too. Uh, this book is on, in Swedish, uh, very good, about the, this guy, uh, what's his name, he, the Arne Borling, who uh, actually started a um, predecessor of the Swedish National Security Agency, which is called FRA, and it's a story about how they broke a cipher during the Second World War, uh, which I think not even the Americans was able to, to break. So it's actually this guy and his team broke it. So this is the, that story. It's uh, very nice written. I think this guy Bengt Beckman who wrote it actually worked at this FRA. So if you want to learn by writing your own exploits, I think this is a good book to start with. I read uh, a number of books on the subject and I think this is without doubt the best books on this subject. So if you just want to buy one book, buy this one. Hacking the Art of Exploitation. It has nice uh, explanations of how stuff works, not a lot of uh, superfluous pages. All information on all every page here is interesting and co but well condensed and good examples. And Bruce Schneier, of course, later has written other books like this, Practical Cryptography, where he explains how to actually use crypto in practice and not implement, implement stuff yourself. That's uh, about what I wanted to say today. And uh, okay, here's another. Uh, what's in uh, English? It's a novel about the Swedish hacker scene today, the modern Swedish hacker scene. The, these other books which I showed were like oh, the old days. And of course, uh, there are more serious books if you're uh, interested. If uh, and if you're very strong, you can. Uh, this Donald Knut, the art of computer programming, but it's not about hacking. So actually, this is really sciencey stuff. And I read the two first books, all the pages, but I don't think I understand everything. But uh, I read most of it. But I didn't read the third book, all of it. I just started to read it. So, uh, and uh, there are also from the school a lot of other books, like for instance. Uh, in computer science, this is an obligatory book from the compiler course. Everybody has read it. And this is an obligatory course about some Unix tools for manipulating text. And of course, there are a lot of other stuff too. But I think that is, yeah, about social engineering and that nightmare guy here. So this was maybe the best social engineering guy uh, of, of all. Kevin Mitnick, and this is his book, The Art of Deception. So if you want to read a book from the master in social engineering, you should maybe take a look at this book. Yep. Mm -hmm.